Hey everybody, it's Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts, and we are going to be discussing some of the issues we've had with our sunflower seed coming up next. Alright, so the first issue we had mainly was at my place. I just got terrible germination rate off our latest batch of sunflower. Now, RJ was traveling, so it was just me, okay? He was not growing at his house. And the sunflower, I would uh, uncover it after the blackout phase, right? Three days, we still did the two days of pre-soaking. And it was just terrible, like half of the tray, more than half of the tray did not germinate. And I believe RJ has some photos he's gonna put up and show you guys. So when RJ got back and we tried it again, he also had the same issues with germination. So then we knew that there had to be something else going on. I also experienced mold for the first time with these sunflower seeds, and it was only in the sunflower seeds, not in any of my other um, sprouts, and I have about, right now, probably 18 trays going. So it was kind of odd that only the sunflower would experience mold, especially I'm using the same dirt, same trays, I'm using the same everything except for the seed to plant them and prepare them. And um, RJ also then experienced a little bit of mold with the sunflower seeds. So we are pretty confident that the seeds were just crappy. Yeah, so, you know, me being um, an engineer and I fix things for a living, I went straight into troubleshooting mode, right? And I wanted to be like, okay, let's go ahead and troubleshoot what is going on. Is it affecting, like Alex said, is it affecting everything else? Is it not? So it was not affecting every, everything else, so it couldn't been, have been the soil, right? Because if it was the soil, then all the other micros would be experiencing similar problems. It couldn't have been the water, because we were using the water for the same micros, so it couldn't have been the water. Um, so Alex and I were thinking, hey, maybe it's my, it might be a little more humid in your mm -hmm. area, it might be a little more dry. So we both bought these, um, what, what are they? Little like, thermostats. <laughs> little thermostats from Amazon. And we wanted to compare her her environment with my environment, and it was relatively similar. I mean, yeah. yours was running a little in, in terms of overall temperature. It was running a little cooler. It was yep. like 74, 75. Mine was around 78. Um, and to RJ's point right there, everyone knows mold festers in warm, humid environments. So the fact that my house was cooler really didn't make much sense at all. Yep. And so I wanted to start to I, I wanted to start isolating where the issue was. So it wasn't the soil, it wasn't the air, it wasn't the water, so it couldn't have been any of those. So it had to have been more specific to the seed. And the previous 25 pound bag we ordered from the supplier... Yeah, very large <laughs> seed supplier. Very large seed supplier mm -hmm. went well. All 25 pounds did extraordinarily well it yielded insane amounts like per flat I would average like 25 ounces 28 ounces and I had not I didn't run into a single issue with their previous order this next order of 25 pounds it was just yep. garbage and you can tell you can tell something is definitely wrong with it um, the seeds like Alex was saying is shown mold during its pre-soak yep. phase before when we on the previous batch of 25 pounds it didn't mold at all all 25 yeah. pounds didn't show any signs of mold in the pre-soak phase in none the blackout phases, phase yeah. in in the in the growing phase none of it and this one it was showing mold right from the soaking phase so something was up and you know when we put it in the blackout phase you can see that there was mold the web style yeah. was starting to spread spidery looking so something was definitely wrong and I knew something was wrong when you know we dealt with it by mixing a small batch of hydrogen uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide with water and it would get rid of the mold but when it grew the sunflower didn't look the same as the yeah. last batch it would it physically looked different it physically looked different it would flatten out and it would like curl upwards. It was very weird, it would look like that. And the other sunflowers would just bloom nice and curved and it looked thicker, even the stems were a lot thicker. These looked weak. These, the other sunflower looked greener too. Mm -hmm. These were like light, lighter colored. Yep, and so I reached out to the internet community, uh, Reddit, which is one of the fastest information places ever, and I asked if anyone was experiencing the same problems and lo and behold, a lot of people are experiencing these problems right now. So we don't know if it's just the batch 
this current yield from whoever they sourced from. But Instagram was saying the same thing, Reddit was saying the same thing, and you know, what kind of annoys both of us is we reached out to them yeah. and they tried to blame it on me blame it on blame it on us they're yeah. saying oh there's something you guys are doing wrong or it's the environment you guys are growing in it's not like that at all I, I mean I can show you guys comments on the reddit post I can show you guys comments on the Instagram feed everyone's running into these issues and it's gotten so bad to some people have even removed sunflower from yeah. their list <laughs> and we don't want to have to do that because we have it, it is a monster for us it's selling it is our number one seller in the farmers market yep. and in restaurants we have some restaurants ordering two to three pounds of these at a time so we don't want to have to resort to that but we just want to let you guys know that this is currently a problem right yep. now with the current batch of sunflower and it looks like it's affecting all sorts of uh, suppliers major suppliers not just one but definitely let's say two to three major suppliers so whoever they're getting it from <laughs> so <laughs> now why RJ and I find this very important is as he mentioned it's a very big seller for us so we had to go out and actually tell all the restaurants that we supply to like hey our sunflower is extremely spotty unfortunately we have a bad batch of seed and it's expensive I think it's 200 something dollars for this amount of seed so you know we didn't want to waste it, especially being a newer startup right we don't just have excessive income to just spend right and we had to tell the restaurants like hey it may not we may not get a good yield we're planning extra but we can't guarantee that this is going to be in here for your dish next week so you know that doesn't look good upon us it doesn't reflect good upon us we're trying to run a business so it's extremely frustrating but we have gone through it and i think some of the ways we got through it was one we have very good relationships with our restaurants yep. And so us being up front and over a week in advance, giving them a heads up that, hey, we may not have this. If there's something else you'd like us to grow, we can, yep. was a huge plus. Yep. Two, we have two locations. So not that, unfortunately, that seed was just terrible, but we were able to kind of isolate and keep the sunflower at one location. And I am growing a lot of the other micros here. So at least we're keeping things separate in case we do see any more issues with it. Yep. And three... Another benefit is that we have a big variety of micros right now on our fresh sheet, so they have a selection of things to choose from, so they can replace the sunflower easily on their menu. Yeah, and this is absolutely one of <laughs> our biggest hurdles that we've encountered since we've started this venture. You know, everything has been pretty smooth sailing. We we're like, wow, it's really easy starting a business, <laughs> no issues at all. And this was one yeah. of the big ones that hit us pretty hard and we needed to act pretty quickly and think on our feet pretty fast and what, what we needed to do. And like Alex said, good thing we developed good business relationships and that's what we really are about. When we're meeting these new restaurant um, either owners or chefs, we tell them straight up, right? Alex is in supply chain, I'm an engineer, yeah. we're not salespeople. We don't have natural sales skills, but what we do want to uh, establish is good business relationships, right? All we care about is growing really good product for everyone. So it definitely helped when we ran into this issue and we approached them straight on and said, hey, we might have issues. We might not be able to yield as much. So, you know, I, I hope you guys are understanding. And they, they were. Overall, they were. So. And don't take our calm demeanor right now to mean anything because obviously at the time. We were freaking the F out. <laughs> RJ's on a cruise, all right? Vacationing. <laughs> I'm trying to hold down the fort. The sunflower is molding. I'm panicking. I'm like, he is going to kill me because something I'm doing is wrong. Thank God it wasn't. I'm, I mean, I'm sad that the sunflower is messed up, but very happy that it wasn't due to a fault of my own. But yeah, I mean, I'm running around scrambling, you know, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. He has no service because he's in the middle of the ocean. So yeah, like entrepreneurship can be a complete hustle at times and you know you're stressed and trying to figure things out but we worked through it and that's what we want to show that like it wasn't the end of the world even though it was a big hit for us and extremely stressful we've gotten through it but yeah just keep your head up if you run into issues like this and you'll persevere yeah. thank you all for watching if you have any questions drop them in the comments below as always alex and i are trying to build a community of like minds so we'd absolutely love it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button so you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure and we will see you guys next time